In 2018, we've had above normal precipitation in the first three months of this year. Uh, across the valley, and as many people are aware, the snowpacks in the Similkameen and the South Okanagan are well above normal. And again, we've been having a late spring, so following on three wet years, which means that there's lots of water around, the soil is wet, there's very few places for that water to go than to simply start running off in our streams and rivers. Hindsight is a wonderful tool, but in reality, we cannot forecast things like this in advance. We had people last year in 2017 that were actually forecasting a drought in January and February because the snowpacks were so low and you recall what happened across the region then. There was no way that that we could predict what was going to happen this year, although we are starting to see a pattern of wetter winters and deeper snowpacks. Is this part of a changing climate? Could very well be. Three years does not necessarily mean a trend, but we're certainly, we're suffering from the impacts now of, of something that's been going on for more than just one year, and no, we couldn't predict it. Yes, we've had uh, a number of forest fires in the, in the southern Okanagan over the last couple of years, and when the fires burn the forest, uh, what they remove is what we refer to as the canopy, so the branches that, that shade the ground, but it also holds back the snow in, in the upper elevations. Where we have extensive areas that may be burned, uh, the snow that would have been caught in the branches and actually uh, evaporated back to the atmosphere is now making it to the ground. And secondly, those trees that were killed, if they're fairly extensive in a watershed, they're not drawing water from the soil anymore. And so the soil is wetter. You got more water in the form of snow on the ground. The soils in the ground are already wet and so we get higher stream flows. I suspect that uh, in some of the things we're seeing in the, in, the, in the Okanagan part of the RDOS, in the Oliver area where they had the, they've had the fires, it will have changed what we refer to as the hydrology of those watersheds. The first thing that, that a homeowner needs to do is, is if they have been subject to flooding in the past, uh, in areas like the village of Tulamine, that it is low elevation with regards to the lake, uh, the houses are close to the lake level. The provincial program puts the first responsibility, the first response on the homeowner to protect themselves. What the regional district and what the emergency folks do is they make supplies such as sandbags and sand available. With regards to such things as, as septic tanks which may flood if an area does flood, you're going to have to pump the tank out after the, the flood has passed and the, and the water level has dropped. But the most serious concern is if uh, septic materials actually flow on the surface and contaminate uh, around the home and, 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 and the surrounding water. There is excellent material that's available both through the Emergency Operations Centre at the Regional District of Okanagan Smilk Main website and there is also um, very good material available at Emergency Management BC. It is both preparing and responding and recovering from. There's excellent materials there. So in the Tulamine area, we've got a large lake. It flows out through a short stream that connects it to the Tulamine River. Only so much water can flow out through that, that channel that connects it to the Tulamine. And what's happening right now is we've got these above normal snowpacks. We've got a late spring. We had a hot week last week where we started to get significant melting right up to the tops of the mountains. And we've got more inflow than can flow out. So the only thing that can happen is the water level rises. It takes anywhere up to 12 to 18 hours for the water that is, is flowing in through the major inflow streams at the north end of the lake to reach that the, that water to reach the south end of the lake. We are not going to see um, a wave flowing down the lake. What we're going to see is the lake level will continue to rise gradually depending upon the weather. So with regards to some of the flooding that, that's, that's been going on now, particularly in Park Rill um, and Green Lake and Willowbrook and so forth in the RDOS. The regional district is, is responding as best it possibly can with the resources that it has. 
the regional district does not have unlimited resources and what it does is it requests assistance from Emergency Management BC. Emergency Management BC can provide both funding as well as assets. By assets I mean the tiger dams and sandbags and HESCO bins, a variety of tools to, to provide flood protection. Those, all of those resources, including uh, a team of forest firefighters, have been on scene and, and are doing everything to the maximum of their ability. And, and we're having successes with regards to, to uh, areas being protected. It is extremely difficult and extremely frustrating for those people who are being flooded. But um, I've watched the RDOS uh, and worked in their emergency operations center, and they are having successes with regards to either addressing immediate emergencies or even eliminating emergencies in other situations.